Now, what I was mentioning about being a poor man, I meant still capable of marriage. I believe firmly in the statement of the Prophet ﷺ when he addressed the young men of the companions and he said, Ya ma'ashur al-shabaab, the hadith that we discussed in our first session here. Oh, assembly of young men, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawaj. Whoever of you is capable of getting married, let him get married. What does that indicate? There are some people not capable of getting married. Then he discussed that other option. If you're not capable of getting married, meaning you don't have the money that is required to start a household and spend on a wife, on her clothing, on her residence, on her needs, and so on, and the dowry as well. If you don't have that, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسَوْمْ Then fast. Because in fasting there is a wija, there is a protection, a kind of staving off of the desires. I believe firmly in that guidance being the most important guidance that is for men approaching marriage and they're worried about can they afford it or not. If they cannot clearly afford to take care of a wife with a job that they've been holding and to provide a place, at least a humble apartment, then they should fast until they are in that position. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. So when we say a poor man comes, I mean relatively poor to the family. He may be able to provide an apartment which they look down upon as being not a very good place to live or his car is not as good as their cars and so on. So in this case, he's able to provide. They can consider the idea that she is used to a certain level of dunya and he should be able to provide that. And when he can't, they can consider based on his religiosity. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. It is a concern that is given, the financial level and how far away he is. In terms of when you say he's poorer than them, how much poorer, how much is the issue? It's something considered carefully now.